Hi, I'm Dominic Bazil for Personas Audio. And today I want to show you some workflows with the Atom Pad Controller. Now the Atom is a MIDI controller that you can use with any music software that supports MIDI. But today we're going to focus on the Atom integrated with Studio One. So I want to create a tropical vibe type of track. And the way we want to start with the Atom, since I have a sound in mind already, I'm going to go ahead to my song section here and press the setup button. Then I press pad 13 to access the browser. Now I can use knob number one to scroll through my virtual instruments and presets. I can also use the navigation buttons here on the right side to target the particular virtual instrument that I want. and expand that. And then I'm going to go to my marimba here and we're gonna hit select to load that up. So now it loads in presence. And you notice on the Atom, the pads now change into yellow and blue pads. The yellow pads will indicate white keys on a keyboard while the blue pads will be your black keys on a piano keyboard. Pad number 15 and 16 will also shift the octave down and up respectively. So, Here's our marimba, but before we start recording that, I also want to instantiate one of our note effects plugins. So let's find that here in the browser. We're going to choose this guy, the EDM Melody Maker. Now my marimba sounds like this. So essentially we're adding a melodic note on top of the pad that we have pressed on the atom. So now that I have my sound loaded, I also want to establish a tempo. So let's go back to the song setup menu, and then pad 14 will allow us to tap tempo. Now if I already know what the tempo I want, I can also use knob number two to dial that in. All right, so we'll go with that. Next thing I want to do is establish a loop. So how do we do that? So we'll press set loop here on the left side of Atom. And then now we can use our navigation buttons left and right to move the cursor. And with the down navigation button, we can set a loop endpoint. If we want to set a loop start point, we would press the up button, but we're gonna leave it at bar one. And then we want to go ahead and enable our loop. So we press shift and the play button, which has the secondary function of enable loop. Awesome. So now we have a tempo. We also have established our loop. So we want to also enable our click, and then we can press shift and click, which has the secondary function of enabling a one bar count in. Now I'm ready to record. Okay, so my timing wasn't perfect, so how do we fix that? Now we can use shift and the nudge button, which has the secondary function of quantize to quantize our performance. Great, so now our timing is perfect. The next thing we wanna do is add some percussive elements to it. So we go back to our song setup button and hit browser again to open up our browser. And we want to navigate to Impact, which is our drum sampler virtual instrument. Let's go to our Atomic Fuel presets, which are presets and sounds that come with the Atom when you purchase it. And we're going to find these Those Eyes kit and hit Select to load that up. And now we have Impact. You notice on the Atom, now the pads are of various colors. Uh, red indicating our kicks, yellow indicating our snaps, claps, and snares. Cymbals and tambourines are blue, and then hi-hats are orange. The other pads are an assortment of phrases and bass notes and other things. So I could record in my percussive elements, but what I wanna do is actually program them in using Studio One's pattern sequencer, which we call pattern parts. So let's create a pattern part 
we go back to the Atom song setup menu. And these eight pads here are user assignable, but by default, pad number five will create a new pattern part for us. Let's also hide the impact with the show hide button on the Atom. So we have a pattern part here, and we also want to use pad number nine in the song setup menu to duplicate that out throughout the entire loop section. Great. Now we want to hit our editor button. This opens up the pattern editor in Studio One. You also notice on the Atom that all the pads go dim because now the 16 pads now become steps in the 16 step sequence of our pattern part. So you notice that when I press pads here, you start seeing them populate in the pattern part of Studio One. So I can essentially hit my transport and just start creating pattern parts. Now if I want to go to another sound or the next lane in the pattern part, I can hit our down button in our navigation section and go to the next sound, which is a snap. Now if I also want to target a particular sound, I want to hit the editor button to go back to the impact pads and then I can simply select it and then return back to the pattern editor. So we add some tambourines here. So let's find some new sounds that we can add to this track. Song setup, browser. I'm also gonna quantize that guy. Now I wanna add some more elements, but I want to duplicate this track. So it's gonna use the same instrument, but I'm going to put the new elements on a separate track. So let's go back to song setup. And pad number one is predefined to duplicate our instrument track here. So we press that, it duplicates the instrument track. So we're using the same instrument, just a new track. So let's add some hi-hats using our note repeat function on the Atom. So we enable note repeat. Let's record. Awesome. So those are the percussive elements. Now let's add a lead line. So we'll go back to our song setup, hit browser, and we'll go to my tie and expand it. We're gonna to go to our lead folder and let's choose this born in Gallifrey lead. So we hit select. And now we have my tie on our screen with our synth sound. So let's record. So if you make a mistake at any point, we can easily hit shift and a stop button, which has the secondary function of undo. So let's try again. So this lead sound sounds a little too loud to me. So what I'm going to do is use knob number one to turn the cutoff down a little bit. This is going to pull it in the mix just a little bit for me. Let's disable our click. All right, awesome. Now let's add a bass sound. Let's go back to song setup, browse, and we'll go to our bass folder. And we're gonna choose this 80s up down. So let's pitch it down a little bit. All right and let's record. And we quantize. But now I wanna add some excitement to this bass line. So let's see what we can do with the cutoff here.
So one thing that we can do is actually automate this cutoff by recording it. So we hit record. So now we've just automated that cutoff for the bass. So now let's add one last element so I can show you some more workflows. So let's go to Song Setup and Browse. Let's also hide our last Mai Tai. And then we're going to scroll down to our PolySense here. And let's go to Melody Activity. Hit Select to Load. And let's pitch it down a little bit. All right, let's audition. Okay, I'm ready. Let's record. Okay, so what if I wanted to hear this maybe an octave up? So I want to edit these notes. So let's hide our Mai Tai and go into the editor. And now in the editor mode, we can use the left and right buttons to navigate and choose any of these musical notes. We can also use the shift button when we hold it to select multiple notes. At that point, we can use our nudge to nudge right or left, or we can use up and down to pitch up and down by semitones. But in this case, I want to choose all of the musical notes. So let's go to our song setup menu. And pad number two, we'll choose all of the notes in our sequence here. And then at this point, I can hold shift and press the down button to shift down an octave or up to shift up an octave. So let's hear how that sounds now. Great, that's what I want. So that's essentially how you create tracks using the Atom with Persona Studio One. So this has been a quick look at the Persona's Atom pad controller with Studio One. For further questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer.